Number 9. The Mod In 1918, famed Norwegian explorer Roald Edmundsen tried to cross the North Pole on a ship called the Mod through a route known as the Northeast Passage. Unfortunately, he failed, and after several grueling winters at sea, he set his sights on reaching the North Pole in an aerial expedition. Edmundsen eventually went bankrupt, and the Mod was sold to the Hudson Shipping Company, which used it as a floating warehouse. It sank in 1930 in Cambridge Bay off the coast of Nanavut, Canada where it sat for over 80 years before a crew began attempting to raise it. The crew finally lifted the wreck out of the water in 2016 after six seasons of trying to retrieve it as part of a project called Maud Returns Home. The team placed the ship on a barge with plans to sail it to Norway. Maud traveled back to her home country the following year via the Northwest Passage, staying the winter in Greenland along the way. Finally, in 2018, the ship arrived back in Norway nearly a century after departing for Admonson's expedition. At last update, there were plans to build a new museum building for housing Maud, which sits in the waters off the village of Toft, with a protective roof shielding her from the elements. Number 8. The Batavia The Batavia was a 17th century flagship of the Dutch East India Company, a multinational corporation that once dominated world trade. Sadly, the vessel wrecked roughly 50 miles or 80.5 kilometers off of Australia's western coast during its maiden voyage to Southeast Asia. The ship's commander, Francisco Palsert, left the wreck site in search of food and water, leaving 282 survivors behind on Beacon Island. He returned three months later, only to find that total carnage had taken place during his absence. A merchant named Geronimus Cornelis had taken control of the survivor colony and ordered the murder of dozens of women and children. His reign of terror finally ended when Pelsart had him executed along with several other mutineers. The remaining survivors were rescued and the 150 foot long, 45.3 meters, Batvia sank. It went undiscovered until the 1960s and the surviving part of the ship's stern section was raised the following decade. It's the only piece of an early 17th century vessel belonging to the Dutch East India Company to ever be removed from the water. Records of where the timber for the ship was sourced are scarce, but a recent study of the wood's tree rings has shed some light on its origins. A team determined that the trees were felled around 1625 in northern Germany and the Baltic region, and the wood was processed shortly thereafter. The researchers also found that the shipbuilders discarded the timber's soft outer rings or sapwood, which is more vulnerable to decay and shipworm infestation. This indicates that the Bafia's builders were skilled craftsmen who were experienced with the type of wood that they were using. In addition to studying the ship, experts are investigating human remains that were buried on Beacon Island. They hope to shed some light on the unspeakable tragedies and other bizarre events that occurred there. Number 7. MV Golden Ray Built in 2015, the MV Golden Ray was a car carrier with a rather short-lived career. The 660-foot or 200 meters vessel was capable of carrying up to 7,400 cars. It was owned by logistics company Hyundai Glovis, where it ran into trouble near the port of Brunswick off the Georgia coast in 2019. The Golden Ray left the dock around midnight for Baltimore and was at sea for just 23 minutes when she began to list heavily, prompting the port to close. All 23 crew members survived with the Coast Guard's help, but there was nothing anyone could do to save the 4,300 cars aboard the ship, which capsized completely and was declared a total loss. Initial speculation blamed the accident on a sudden loss of stability, possibly from incorrect cargo stowing or water ballasting. There was also a mysterious internal fire that quickly burnt out of control before the vessel turned onto its side, according to a Hyundai Glovis official. An official investigation determined that numerous factors were to blame for the sinking, including incorrect calculations and a portside door that was left open, which caused the Golden Ray to take on water. Nearly all of the ship's 24 fuel tanks were full when she capsized, causing serious environmental concerns. Salvage crews got right to work on pumping what tanks they could and plugging the vents on the others. 
The entire salvage operation was an enormous undertaking that required the crew to travel to Chile to examine the Golden Ray's sister ship and better understand her layout. A year and a half into the project, only half of the ship had been removed from the water. The crew cut it up in the water and removed it piece by piece, until the entire wreck was finally cleaned up nearly two years after it sank. Number 6. Bessie White Violent storms are often blamed for making ships disappear, but they're also sometimes credited with making lost ships reappear. This was certainly the case for the Bessie White, a Canadian coal schooner that encountered heavy fog and ran aground near Fire Island in New York State. The incident happened in either 1919 or 1922, based on conflicting historical records. After crashing into the rocks, Bessie White began to quickly take on water. Thankfully, the crew has escaped on lifeboats. Everyone survived and only one person was injured, but the vessel and its coal cargo were a total loss. Over the following weeks, anything salvageable was removed from the ship, which was eventually swept out to sea. When Hurricane Sandy battered the region in 2012, a large part of what's believed to be the ship's wooden hull was exposed. It had become buried along the shore and was forgotten about until the storm caused it to resurface. Since then, the hull has been covered and uncovered and it's often at least partially visible. Nobody knows for sure whether the wooden object is from Bessie White, but all signs point towards this being the case. Either way, it clearly belongs to a very old ship that wrecked in the area long ago. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome! Thanks for checking us out. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number 5. MV Tricolor Built in 1987, MV Tricolor was a Norwegian flag car carrier that became infamous for getting into three crashes in the English Channel over a two-week period. It all started on December 14, 2002. While en route from Belgium to the UK with 3,000 vehicles aboard, the boat collided with a container ship called the Cariba. The tricolor sank in 98 feet, or 30 meters of water north of the French coast, tipping onto its side on the way down and taking its cargo with it. Thankfully, all 24 crew members were rescued safely by the ship that had crashed into theirs. Despite the precautions put in place to avoid another accident, a cargo ship called the Nicola and another vessel, the Vicky, slammed into the sunken tricolor. As if things couldn't get worse, a few weeks later, a valve was knocked off the tricolor by yet another ship, and a massive oil spill ensued. In early 2003, a salvage company pumped as much oil out of the wreck as possible. Then, the team spent three months cutting the submerged ship into nine pieces, like cheese, and pulling them out of the water. The thousands of luxury cars that went down with the vessel were removed and destroyed. Finally, towards the end of 2004, the operation was declared complete, leaving what was left of the tricolor a mere pile of scrap. Number 4. MV Baltic Ace Built in 2007, the MV Baltic Ace was a Polish-built Bahamian flag car carrier with a carrying capacity of 2,132 vehicles. Her short-lived career ended in December 2012 when she collided with a container ship, the Corvus J, while en route from Belgium to Finland. The crash happened roughly 25 miles off Rotterdam, in one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. The Baltic Ace immediately began to take on water and sank in just 15 minutes. A rescue operation ensued, but proved difficult due to bad weather and 10-foot high or 3-meter waves. 13 crew members were rescued by helicopters and other ships. Five crew members were confirmed dead the following day, and six missing crew members were later declared dead after it was presumed they likely got trapped and went down with the ship. It was important to remove the wreck as soon as possible, because it posted both shipping and environmental hazards. Salvage operations began in May 2014 with the removal of oil from the fuel tanks. After that, the team cut the ship into eight sections and pulling it from the water piece by piece. The painstaking project was finally finished a year and a half later, in late 2015. Number 3. Nanhai 1 
The Nanhai-1 was a Chinese wooden merchant ship that sank off southern China's Guangdong province during the 12th or 13th century, with somewhere between 60 and 80,000 items aboard. It was quickly buried in a thick layer of silt, which kept it remarkably preserved for centuries to come. A joint British and Chinese expedition discovered the ancient wreck in 1987 while searching for a Dutch East India Company vessel. Measuring 100 feet long, or 30.4 meters, and 32 feet, or 9.8 meters wide, it's the largest ship of its kind ever found. It was also the first vessel found along a vital trade route called the Marine Silk Road, which connected China with the Middle East, India, and Africa. Experts are unsure of the exact route the vessel was taking when it sank into the South China Sea. They believe that it left southern China to trade with other countries along the Marine Silk Road when it encountered a brutal storm and went under. In 2007, a salvage team placed the Nanhai-1 into a giant metal box and raised it from the seabed. It was kept inside the box, covered in silt and seawater until excavations officially began. Inside the ship, archaeologists found a trove of valuable artifacts, including porcelain, lacquerware, coins, and gold objects dating back to the Imperial Song Dynasty, which ruled China until 1279. One expert told the press that there were more than enough items to fill a provincial-level museum. Number 2. Vasa when the Vasa set sail on August 10, 1628, she was the world's most high-tech warship. Commissioned by Swedish king Gustav II Adolf, the ornately decorated vessel was covered in elaborate carvings and had 64 bronze cannons. But Vasa's glory was incredibly short-lived. Minutes into her maiden voyage from Stockholm Harbor to the Swedish island of Alpsbeven, she plunged to the sea bottom less than 400 feet or 122 meters from land. A combination of engineering flaws and heavy winds quickly brought the ship down as hundreds of horrified spectators watched from the shore. 30 people died in the disaster. Authorities tried to raise the wreck shortly after the ship sank, but it had settled in the mud and got even more stuck during the attempted recovery. Finally, in 1961, the Swedish government raised the ship along with thousands of artifacts that were on it when it sank. Around 95% of its wood was intact thanks to the Baltic Sea's cold, oxygen-poor water, which prevents shipworms and bacteria from thriving. Vasa is the only preserved 17th century vessel in the world, according to the Vasa Museum in Stockholm, where it's on display. There are several theories about what exactly happened to cause the ship to sink. The king had rushed the building process, and the vessel was designed by someone who had no experience with armed ships. Its gun deck was far too heavy and it had very little resistance to changes in the wind and waves. Although Vasa never accomplished anything noteworthy since it didn't have a chance to, it lives on as an iconic symbol of Swedish heritage. Number 1. Costa Concordia the Italian cruise ship Costa Concordia was in the first leg of a Mediterranean cruise in early 2012 when it struck a reef off Isola del Giglio with 3,206 passengers and 1,023 crew members aboard. Captain Francesco Chettino had deviated from the planned route and steered the ship closer to the island to perform a salute as it sailed past. In doing so, he had disabled the alarm system for the Costa Concordia's computer navigation system. He would later claimed that he had done this numerous times before and was familiar with the seabed in the area, but his mistake truly proved that human judgment is prone to error. Now, thousands of lives hung in the balance as the ship began to list. A six-hour rescue effort ensued and most of the passengers and crew were saved. In a desperate bid to save their own lives, many people swam to the island. Others rushed to lifeboats or were saved by helicopter. Sadly, 27 passengers and 5 crew members died. Captain Chitino left the ship before all the passengers had disembarked and was ultimately sentenced to 16 years in prison for his role in the disaster and his failure to be the last person off the vessel. Between 2013 and 2014, the Costa Concordia was rolled upright and stabilized using metal beams that were placed onto the seabed. Air was pumped into the ship's cassins to refloat it from the seabed. From there, it was moved to deeper waters and then refloated some more. 
Finally, the vessel made its way back to its home port in Genoa. The 1.2 billion salvage operation came with a higher price tag than the 600 million cost of building the Costa Concordia in the first place. And even after the wreck was raised and relocated, it still had to be dismantled and scrapped, which took several years. The job of recycling the ship was finally finished in mid-2017. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to learn more about incredible ship recoveries, let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.